to another episode in the Captain's Quarters. It has been way too long since I have worked on this project and I am so happy to be back to it. Some of you might know that I have a tiny, small, like really small obsession with model ships. Like you barely would even notice. So today I am going to be making my very own miniature model ship to go in the very bottom section of the captain's quarters. So far all the model ships that I have have been collected and I have never made one myself except for the larger scale one that I made for an entirely different project. Like I said, little bitty obsession. But this one will be incredibly tiny and a bit of a challenge. So let's get started. I decided to start off by creating a small boat first. I'm using these pegs that were sent to me by my friend Kim. Thank you, Kim. They came in a kit that she, I guess it was like a fort kit. So I don't really know how to tell you where to find them, but I did notice that they were about the same size as a pencil. So if you did want to try something like this, um, obviously there'd be like pencil lead in the middle, but it's about the same size as a pencil. I started by carving or sanding down the bottom of the piece so that it would sit flat on my surface and then I cut it just a little bit shorter with my easy cutter. I'm also using my Dremel, which my Dremel kept dying for some reason. I'm using my Dremel and I ended up switching to a bigger one to carve down the very top because the top of it, if it's going to be a little sailboat, needs to be flat. So I'm working on that and once I got it flat, I changed to a different Dremel tool that was more of a carving tool and started pushing into the wood. And this is when I realized I'm not the greatest at carving. I just don't have the finesse and the skills to carve, especially at this scale. It was at this point I started to feel that very chaotic Animal Crossing crafting table vibes where I was just kind of using whatever tool I could get my hands on to make something. I do think it turned out pretty cute. It ends up looking like a hand carved toy and that's okay with me because this is supposed to be a model ship within my model ship. So it's like a model inside, it's model inception here. So I'm, I'm happy with how it came out. Although I do think I'll have to do it a little bit differently for the larger ship. I am using a toothpick here to create the mast, which ends up being what I use to create the masts for both ships. Because this piece is so tiny, I decided it'd probably be the best idea to tape it down to the mat before I start trying to accurately drill into it. I drilled a shallow hole just enough so that I could get some glue in there. I didn't want it to go accidentally all the way through the boat, but I just glued a shallow hole so I could glue it and I decided to leave the point at the top. I, I don't know why, but that seemed to make sense to me. So I left the point on this one. For the sails, I am using some muslin material and I dipped it into a mixture of water and glue and then let it dry on top of a silicone mat. I did this so that once I cut into it, it doesn't fray and so it's a little bit stiffer to work with. I also wanted to add a fin to the bottom of the boat and I'm using some paper and I'm cutting on the edge where I had folded the paper so when it unfolds slightly it makes a triangle shape and I think this will give it a little bit more of a defined fin shape. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. And then I'm just using some wood glue to glue it to the bottom of the ship. And because this is so tiny, all I did was add a little bit of wood glue on the inside so that it kind of filled in the front and back of the fin. So when I paint it, you won't see those holes. It'll look like a solid piece. Before I work on installing the sails, I wanted to go ahead and make a little stand. I'm using one regular popsicle stick and one thinner popsicle stick and I'm just kind of cutting the shapes that I think will work. So the base is just a little bit shorter than the boat itself and then out of the thinner popsicle stick I cut these two little tiny rectangles and now I'm trying to carefully cut a triangle in it so that the fin will fit into the base and hold itself. 
I had to be very careful because those small pieces really wanted to split in half as I was cutting into them. I'm using some wood glue to glue those two pieces down, and here we have a little mini stand for the boat. I'm using just plain brown acrylic paint to paint the boat and get it completely covered, and this will also help everything look like one solid carved piece. I'm adding a few little details with a micro brush. These are the little tiny brushes you can find in the railroad model section of the store. To get the shape for the sails that I know will work with the boat, I'm just laying it on top of the dried piece of muslin and cutting the shape. Because I put it into the water glue solution, I know that it's not going to fray on me. It's just too tiny to try and do anything to the edges besides just cut the edges. I made the triangle and now I made an extra piece of the toothpick to go onto the bottom and this will be, oh gosh, I don't know the names of the boat pieces. I really want to say it's the flying jib just because of that one scene in the office where Aaron is playing trivia and gets it right. Don't hit that bell. Flying the... jib. Flying jib is correct. But I'm pretty sure that's not correct in this case. I glued the first sail on with some Fabri-Tac glue because it takes hold pretty quickly and then also glued the entire boat to the base. Now that I have those two pieces together, I'm going to add on the sail that is holding onto a piece of string. This is where this project starts taking on some very long glue times because if I don't let this dry completely before I start messing with it, it will start to come undone. So I let the first glue spot dry completely and then I can add the second glue spot which is down on the boat front and then push the string into the glue. I want this to dry completely as well, and then I am adding a layer of Gorilla Super Glue over top so that I am absolutely 100% sure that this string is not going to come undone. Once the string's in place, I'm going to do the same method where I draw onto my fabric the shape that I want for the sail, then I can add glue to the string and then carefully attach the sail. Also, once that's attached to the string, I'm going to add glue to that very small corner that will touch the mast coming out of the center of the sailboat and make sure that that is glued as well. And that is my finished practice ship. I think it turned out pretty well and I'm happy I took the time to do this piece first. It ended up being a great decision for me to make the tiny little sailboat first to kind of test out my skills with the materials because I learned a big lesson that I am not great at carving. That's something I would love to learn someday, but today was not that day. So I decided to fall back onto one of my favorite crafting materials, paper. Now that I'm working on a bigger ship, I decided to take some inspiration from the ships I already own. I did not make these, I purchased them, but they were made by other craftsmen and other artisans, and so I think they're a great place to get some ideas. My inspiration for this build is the Swedish warship, the Vasa. I have had several people send links to me for this ship, especially because it's a 17th century ship. It's one of the most well-preserved, and I've just really enjoyed learning about it. So definitely look it up if you want to learn more about it. But it's my inspiration, and I definitely say inspiration because there's no way I can get as much detail on this really tiny model as it has in real life. I'm starting out by gluing together three bits of balsa wood. Balsa wood is pretty soft, so I think it'll be a little bit easier for me to carve, especially just with an X-Acto knife, as I don't feel like I have exactly the right tools I need to do some really detailed carving. I'm going to be just getting a general shape. I'm looking at a profile picture of the Vasa and just trying to get it in a similar shape. Like I said, it's inspired by, it definitely won't be exact. And because this is my first time building a ship model like this, I end up learning so much and there are a few ways I would do things differently in the future, especially when it comes to proportions of the ship. Once I have the general profile shape cut out, I can start shaping it with some sandpaper and then carving into the bottom to create the rounded base. 
I am later going to add a more sharp fin with a, some paper and um, that'll help give more detail. But here I'm just trying to get a general shape. And just be careful if you do try this, make sure you are carving away from your fingers. I did find the balsa wood to be pretty easy to carve, but I also found it pretty easy to mess up and take out chunks that you didn't quite mean to take out just because it's a very soft wood. Finally, I have a shape that I'm pretty happy with and I think will be a great base to start building up on. There are a few dents in the wood and I'm just going to fill those in with some drywall compound. And I'm also using some Mod Podge to go over the face of the wood once I'm happy with it. This just helps protect the wood because it is so soft. I don't want to accidentally ding it with my fingernails or with the tool and there be a dent in the side. So the Mod Podge just helps with that. The best thing I did during this entire build was add a toothpick to the bottom of the ship so I had an easier way to hold on to it as I worked all around on the different sides. And this just came in handy so much. <laughs> Before I get to the paper details, I did decide to add a few of the details with some string. And the reason for this is I do feel like string bends just a little bit easier than paper does and is just slightly stronger. So I'm using some string and I put glue down on the face and I'm just carefully pushing the string into the glue where I want there to be a little ribbon of detail. On the side of the Vasa it has these lines and in between the lines there are openings for the windows and for the cannons and so I wanted to make sure that I added those in. Each time I lay down a string I make sure to go back over it with some more Mod Podge by doing this, the Mod Podge starts to build up on either side of the string and it makes it look like it's more a piece of the wood that was carved than something that was stuck on later. I went with two strings at the top with an opening big enough for windows to go in between and three strings at the bottom. I should have made it so the strings were long enough to go all the way around to the other side, but since I cut them off, I just like worked really hard to try and match them up again, but I did do the same pattern on both sides. I'm now adding a piece of wood. This is just a little cut off from a popsicle stick on the back end. This is where I'm going to start building up the helm area of the ship. I'm also adding some paper to reinforce this piece of wood so it doesn't accidentally get knocked off while I'm working on it. I'm just going to lay that into the glue and then cut around it and yeah, I'm also making another piece from paper at the same time. It's very similar to the way I did it on the sailboat. I cut on the folded part of the paper to create an extra little fin piece to go at the bottom of the ship. I'm using the same glue and water mixture that I used for the sails. I'm taking a long strip of paper and this is what's going to create the side rails for the upper deck of the ship and I'm putting it into the water and this is going to help it bend a little bit better. The paper still isn't super bendable as far as like making a slight curve. You will see that it starts to buckle in the middle but adding the water does make it a little bit easier to move and shape the way I want it to. I added some glue onto the body of the ship and slowly started pushing the paper onto the side and forcing it into shape. All of these details are being added because I'm looking at a sample photo of the Vasa ship and just trying to copy what I see. Of course, it won't be quite as detailed. Here are the finished sidewalls, and now I'm going to start building up the front of the ship. I do have a little bit of a nose that I carved into the main body, but I do want it to be slightly more pointed, and that was easier to do with some paper. I glued that onto either side, and I'm using again some drywall compound to fill in that area that there's a hole left because I didn't quite carve it sharp enough with the wood. And now I just need to let that dry. I also need to continue building up where the helm is located and that means another piece of decking which is going to sit on top of the side rails that I just added. In order to cover up the gap that I've now created at the front, I'm going to cut another small piece from the skinny popsicle stick and glue that in place. 
and then I can add another layer of paper to build up the side walls again in the helm area. And now I'm just going to do several layers of paper to build up the captain's quarters area, which is always at the back of the ship. I did two layers of folded paper and just kind of looked at the Vasa sample, trying to match it as closely as possible, even though it's not quite exact. Here's where I start to add paint and the whole thing really comes to life because it no longer looks like scraps and bits of pieces of craft supplies. It starts to look like a wooden ship that has been painted and sculpted and put together. It's at this point I really started to get a craving for a chocolate cake pop for some reason. That's mushy. I decided to do a second coat of a lighter brown on the outside of the ship and leave the interior a dark brown, making a little bit more of a difference between the deck and the outside of the ship. And then of course I went back and aged it. I do want it to look as though this ship was carved and I think adding the different color browns really helps with that. In order to add the portholes and the areas where the cannons would exist, I decided to use some of my stamps, well they're not stamps, punches, there we go, <laughs> my punches. I have a punch collection of all different shapes and they come in handy so often. I pick them up at garage sales and estate sales and um, for this one I am picking out the very tiny holes that it punches out whenever you punch paper. I'm using a black cardstock because then I don't have to paint each individual piece of paper and I'm picking up the little tiny dots and they're two different sizes. I think maybe I also used a different punch for this and I'm lining them up, continuing to look at my photo for reference. I also wanted to add the vibrant red paint that you can see on the Vasa recreations. It's not on the original one because it's worn away over the years. It's very old, um, but the model seem to have this red paint on the outside. It's very decorative and I'm sad I can't get every single detail in there, but I'm trying to get some of the big eye-catching details that I can. I'm also using this punched out paper that has these triangle, this like triangle look to it. I'm putting this on the front and the back of the ship to create a little bit more interest. These are areas where there should again be portholes or windows to look out. I also have these punched out snowflakes and I'm going to be painting most of the snowflake gold because I'm going to be cutting them apart and using the individual pieces to create some gilded filigree. I'm using also the gold paint on the ship itself so it looks like it's all one piece once I glue it on. When it's dry I'm just cutting off one of the I guess arms, is snowflake arms, snowflake fingers, the little pieces that are coming off on the side. I'm cutting those off individually and then I'm going to add them making sure that they touch the gold that I painted onto the ship so it looks as though one long gold piece that was affixed to the ship itself. Here's how it looks once they are attached and I really like how it came out. Again, it's not perfect, but I think, you know, when you're trying to work in a scale that's this small, you have to kind of fudge some of the details just a little bit. In order to add the masts or the large poles that hold up the sails, I am starting by marking out with a sharpie where I think they need to go. This is going to help me guide my drill bit. I am drilling straight into this while holding the ship and that's because this ship is a lot thicker than the sailboat and I had a lot more control in holding it with my hand and I didn't feel like my fingers were in danger. I drilled in again very shallowly, just enough so that I could add some glue and feel like the masts would stay in place. 
From the same balsa wood I used to create the ship body, I cut a little base and added a hole and I cut off the toothpick I had been using as a handle and allowed it to slip into the hole. And this is going to become a temporary docking spot for my ship so that I can make sure that my masts are being put in vertically and correctly. Um, if I'm just holding them with my hand, I don't really have a place for it to rest and make sure that it's staying straight. I used my photo reference to guess at how tall the masts need to be. Once I started putting on the sails, I realized I didn't quite make them tall enough because I really only have room to put two sails where I think I should have had three sails on each middle mast in the end. So I think they should have been a little bit taller, but I think for a model ship, uh, it still works for the effect. Once they were glued in and entirely dry, again this project has so many dry times, it's pretty crazy, um, I went ahead and painted it and decided to get to work on making the strings. As you can see on this sample ship, it looks like they previously glued the strings before adding them to the model, which makes sense and I think would be a lot easier to do, so that's what I'm going to do here. I taped down a piece of wax paper and then glued one strip of black cardstock to the bottom. Then I used a piece of toothpick to measure out how far I wanted the strings to go up from the side of the boat to the center of the mast. I then used that toothpick to measure out how far away I needed to glue the other strip of paper and that gave me the bottom and the top for the places where I needed to add strings. Once the glue is dry there, I took again my water and glue solution and added the string in there just so it kind of soaked up some of that water and glue. It made it a little bit easier for me to deal with it. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to see because I'm using white string on top of white wax paper, but I'm laying the string down and I'm using three strings in some places and two strings in other places. I'm laying them in a triangle pattern and letting them dry. I also made sure to lay out two other strings up at the top, making sure I soak them with water and glue so that they dry, and those will become some other strings that need to go in different places on the ship. So now I'm going to let this all dry, and uh, then I can start clipping the individual pieces that will go onto the boat. So the main center mast is going to have the pieces that have three strings, and so I'm going to cut it free from the wax paper and then trim any of the string that is sticking outside of the black pieces of paper. It will be a little bit easier to see it in a second exactly what pattern I made with the strings. So now I have one larger piece at the bottom, one longer black piece at the bottom, and one smaller black piece at the top. The larger piece is going to glue to the side of the ship and the smaller piece is going to glue onto the side of the mast. So here I'm just making sure that I like where it's at and then I can attach it with glue. This is going to take a lot of time and concentration making sure that the glue sticks before you move on to the next set of strings. And finally on both sides here's how the strings look. I did decide to add some gold to the long black pieces at the bottom. I think it just added to the paint job for the ship. I think one of the toughest things when it came to this project was, well, one, the dry times, and second, trying to figure out what order to do this in so you're not constantly in your own way. I had to make the crow's nests that go on top of the original strings that I just put on there. So I used a buttonhole punch and then a regular hole punch around it to try and make these little donut shapes. It took me quite a few <laughs> to get them to where the smaller hole in the middle was actually centered, but I did finally get it. And then I just added some glue and then slipped those down over the top of the toothpicks until it hit right on top of the strings where they are glued to the masts. I didn't try and make railings on the crow's nests. I just, I really couldn't figure out how I wanted to do that. So I just left them flat discs. 
And here's how they look once they're all attached. For the next set of strings, I have this very kind of monster eyelash looking piece. I cut apart the strings that I had previously soaked with glue and then glued them to one long piece of black cardstock. This is to create a end, so like the black piece is the end. It's going to create a little bit of an easier gluing surface for me. Right now I added glue to the black cardstock square that's on one end of the string. I glued it right underneath the crow's nest and let it dry. Here, I'm slightly off camera, sorry about that. I added another piece and I'm just going to let those strings lay there as the glue dries again, making sure that it's secure before I go on to the next step. Once it's completely dry, I am again reinforcing it with some super glue just to make sure those strings don't eventually pop off. Once they are dry, I'm going to carefully wrap the other end of the string around the mast, making sure that it hits the glue that I put on the mast, and do this for both strings, trying to keep them as parallel as possible. That's just what I saw in the photo. Again, I'm just kind of going by what the photo looks like. I am not a professional when it comes to, well, obviously, y'all know that by now. I don't know what all the parts of the ship are called. I don't know any of that. I'm just going based off what I see in the photo. Here, I'm just clipping all of the loose ends, trying to make sure that I don't clip anything that should be staying on the ship. And this is how my strings are looking once they're attached. And finally, I need to add the sails. And for these, I decided to have them rolled up. I didn't have any ships in my collection that had rolled up sails. And the Vasa isn't typically shown with sails very often. So I didn't want to just guess and get it wrong. So I decided to just make them look as though they're rolled up. To do this, I glued the cutout shape. I just cut it out of that fabric that I had previously soaked in glue and water so I knew it wasn't going to fray. And then I accordion folded the sail up until it met with the toothpick that I had glued to one end. Once it was folded up, I took a string and added a little dab of glue and just wrapped the string around until the glue dried and held it in place. I ended up adding two of these strings per sail, but from the reference pictures I saw, there could be more added if you did decide to try and make this. I cut off the excess strings, and then I was ready to add them to the boat. I thought these turned out so cute. They're so tiny, and I just love the way they look. To add them on, they kind of go up underneath the string that's coming off the crow's nest. And so I added some glue and I added some super glue to the mast. So I added tacky glue to the sail, super glue to the mast, and then once they met each other, they have kind of an instant connection. You still want to hold it there for a little bit, but it does work really well to get a pretty quick grab on the glue. Now there are two more sails that I think go on the very front piece of the ship and I could not find a photo of how these look when they're rolled up. I think they roll up against that front mast piece, but I just couldn't find any clear pictures. So that's where I put them. I did just put a little bit of glue so I have to, if I tear them off later to fix it, um, it won't be that hard to do that. I did decide to turn my temporary base into a permanent base, and that was easy. I just cut it a little bit skinnier, sanded it, painted it, and then I glued the ship in place, making sure to use the toothpick, and that was it. So now it's ready to go in the project. my ship in place, it is time to do the final round of putting the Captain's Quarters books into the project. I've been collecting books for the Captain's Quarters from you for a year? Has it been a year? 
I'm not quite sure. But it has been seriously the most amazing part of this project. Unfortunately, the shelves are filling up and I do want to have room to put a few more knickknacks. And so this is the very last episode of me putting books into the shelf and the captain's shelves are now closed. If you're feeling like you missed out, do not worry because I am thinking this will be something I will continue to do when I do these channel custom build projects. I love finding a way for you to participate, especially because some of the books that I have received have been the first miniatures that you've made. And that just blows my mind, first of all, that you would send something so special to me, and second, that so many people are getting into miniatures and really enjoying it. This first book is from Sean from Oklahoma. He also runs the channel Dolphin Magic Pro, and he also made the captain's desk chair. He sent me this book that is based off the legend of the Skyloft, which is a story that I wrote for another ship project that I made. And it's so cool. The whole book has the entire story in it. So that's such a cool addition. Thank you for sending that. This next book is from Holly, who runs Holly Hooks in Wisconsin. And she sent a book that has hooks on it. So that could be definitely interpreted in a couple different ways inside of a ship. It even has a coffee stain on the cover. She also sent this amazingly crocheted blanket for the captain and it's in the captain's colors. So that is perfect. And I definitely need to find a great spot for that in the captain's quarters. And here is Holly's card if you want to check out her work. This next book is from Cat B from New Jersey, and it is a book called The Songs of the Sirens of the Sea, and she put a lot of green on it because she knows that's my favorite color. There are actually music sheets inside, and a lot of the songs that I know and love are included in there, which makes it even more special. You might notice that I'm adding these books downstairs. It is a little bit hard for me to get to the upstairs bookshelf still, but I'm going to put this one next to the Fiji Mermaid. This next book is from Maggie R. from North Carolina, and I haven't opened it yet because it had this really cool wax seal and I wanted to show that to you, but it is a book called Coastal Carolina, and it is all about navigating the dangerous shoals and a little information about Blackbeard. It's got these lovely clasps and pictures of uh, lighthouses on the front and the side. This next collection is from Andy from New York. They sent me a stack of brand new journals for the captain. This is actually from the Cubed Collective parent who sent me this lovely, well, not me. They sent it to the captain. <laughs> they sent this lovely letter and the children who are named Braxton, Sarah, and Odette sent this lovely hot air balloon bookend, which will go upstairs on the bookshelf in the upper part of the captain's quarters. And the captain's definitely going to keep these letters inside his desk. Andy also sent me these tools, so thank you so much for that. I did have my first casualty in the mailing system. This is from Vanessa F. from Florida. The envelope made it, the letter made it, but the book somehow slipped out. So Vanessa, if you would like me to create a book from the card that made it, I would love to do that to make sure you are represented on the shelves. Just let me know in a comment. I am so sorry it got lost and like I'm heartbroken over it. <laughs> so um, I would be more than happy to make a book from your card. This next book is from Annalise and Bright Eyes. I hope I said your names correctly. It is a collection of drawings from the captain on his journeys, and there's even a little tiny treasure map inside, which I think is just perfect. And they also sent me this drawing of their first dollhouse that they're going to create. And I just love the characters on the back. I hope they make these into dolls. They're just a wonderful design. This next item is not a book. It is from Jody K, who runs No Small Matter Miniatures from Virginia. And she sent me something special that a lot of you have suggested that I create. She created it for me. It is a sextant. And I don't really know that much about it, which is great because she sent me an information sheet for me to read through. But this is also something that you all had suggested would be the time travel device for the captain. And so I went and grabbed the safe, which should hold the time travel device. I have not installed it yet. I still need to do that. But for now, I'm going to place the sextant inside of the safe and we'll have to kind of 
figure out a display for it. I think that's a great place for it anyway. Um, although I don't know, I might want it to be out where it can be seen. I also received a surprise package from Carol who sent me this ship inside of a glass box. I might have to put this one behind the sofa or against the wall. It'll be fun trying to figure out where it goes. I want to say a huge heartfelt thank you to everyone who sent in a Captain's Quarters book. They are beautiful. They are incredibly special to me. And now I have the difficult job of figuring out how to get them all in place so that they're not like permanently glued so I can still get them out but they're not falling all over the place. So that will be something I need to figure out. But I am just so, so thankful, and I've said this in every single video, but I'll keep saying it, it is my favorite part of this entire project. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to say one more thing real quick. At the time of me filming this, we are almost at 50,000 subscribers, so if we've passed that by the time this video goes up, well, it doesn't matter if we passed it or not. If you're here and you're watching and you're subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It uh, just blows my mind, and I just am so thankful for each one of you. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye! I have two. It was like a two for less. Not two for one, but two for less. Should I share it? I'll share it. I'm too nice. That was a delicious, a delicious joke. Mm-hmm.